everybody and welcome back to Upper Room. Today is the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This feast day um, was originally on a different day. Um, today it commemorates the joys and sorrows of the Mother of God and her virtues and perfections, her love for God and her divine Son and her compassionate love for mankind. In the year 1969, uh, Pope Paul V moved the celebration uh, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary to the Saturday immediately following the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, so, uh, obviously, as you can see, that Jesus is above Mary. Mary would be the first person that would tell you that. They're not equals. She says she's a creature. She is a creature just like you and me. We are creatures created by God when Jesus was never created, but he was begotten. So Jesus has always been there in the beginning with God. He's always been God, okay, in, in human form. All right, so, he's, so he is God's words made flesh. So any words that God would use, that, that's Jesus. So that's why we say everything has been made through him and in him, okay, so, so because God uses his words to create reality, to create life, to create, um, you know, the plants and the animals and, and the sun and the stars and the moon and everything, right? So those words of God's, because they are God, they're God's words, became real in Jesus Christ. So Jesus is truly the, the, one of the third persons of the Trinity. Okay, equal to God, right? Because they're of, he is of God. So, um, so I, I wanted to talk about this feast day because I have a great devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Today is dedicated to meditating on her joys and her sorrows that she experienced during life. And there is one, there are two amazing ways to be able to honor the Blessed Virgin Mary today. One, obviously, is to go to Mass tonight, this evening, if you can, and go to confession, because she wants us all to go ahead, go to heaven. And so uh, she has even recommended uh, to, search, to certain visionaries when she, there have been apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that if Catholics went to uh, confession at least uh, once a month, um, more would enter heaven. Okay, um, she's she's always made she's also she's always uh, been promoting her rosary, saying praying the rosary helps helps uh, serve penance for certain sins. Um, so so the rosary can help us uh, at our judgment by pr how many times we pray it, how often we pray it, and we learn this from her. And she guides us also to receive Holy Communion as often as possible. And you know Jesus tells us you know. Uh, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, uh, you have no life in you. He who eats my body and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. So, so Jesus is very serious about us participating in that sacrament of consuming his body and blood. It's a serious thing. You're, you have no life in you if you don't consume him. If you don't consume uh, him in Holy Communion, you, you are not in him, and he is not in you, according to Jesus himself. And uh, those who eat his body and drink his blood have eternal life. And Jesus himself will raise him up on the last day because he, told, he said so. So those, that is extremely important to the Christian life. That's why Catholics say that the Eucharist, which is the body of Christ, is the source and summit of the Christian life. It is the pinnacle of our worship. It is, it is, it is the main substance, sustenance that we as Christians can consume for the spiritual life, for our spiritual life, and for God's protection over us. Um, so, and so Mary is constantly inviting us uh, to to receive Jesus in, in Holy Communion uh, and go to confession and pray the rosary all, all the time. She's always doing that. That's why we listen to her because everything she's asking us to do is, an, is, an, it, it, it is part of our faith. She doesn't ask us to do anything that's against our faith. 
then it would be questionable. But I mean, it would just be like, if I recommended to you, you should probably go to confession and, you know, you should probably pray more and you should, you know, probably go to Holy Communion uh, if you feel depressed or you feel like empty or you feel like you're kind of at a loss and have no direction in your life. Um, yeah, let God speak to you. Um, you would probably hear me out when I tell you that too, right? So she's not telling us something that we don't already know. She's just supporting that and trying to encourage us to continuously participate in the sacraments that Christ laid out for all of his followers to have. These are little fountains. These are fountains of grace uh, that God has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. So, so today, the two ba best ways right at home is meditate on the joyful mysteries of the rosary. Okay, so you pray the joyful mysteries, takes about 15 minutes, and you meditate on them in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God today. And you also can pray the seven sorrows of Mary. Uh, this is a, uh, this is the seven sorrows chaplet or seven sorrows rosary. This rosary has, uh, I've done a video about this before, but it was kind of a long time ago. This basically has seven mysteries to it, whereas the rosary has five mysteries. And these have seven beads in between each mystery, as the rosary has ten beads between each mystery. And you pray it similarly to how you would pray the rosary. It's just it, there are fathers and Hail Marys. The only difference is, is in the beginning of the, when you first start the chaplet, you start the chaplet and you say, and you say uh, the act of contrition. This is what uh, you would say um, when you go to confession, right? After you would confess your sins to the priest, which the priest, you know, he's not going to remember your sins. He's just there as a listening ear for God. And he's being there as an instrument for Jesus to um, absolve you of your sins physically uh, uh, um, by his authority and uh, uh, given to him through the ministry of the church, um, which is the church that Christ created, which is the church whose first pope is St. Peter, who Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven to and made promises to. Um, and the same thing goes for the bishops who, when Jesus said to the first uh, bishops who were the apostles of the Catholic Church, who basically uh, said, you know, uh, he who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. So we don't want to reject the bishop's teachings of the church because we would be rejecting Christ. According to Jesus, that's what we would be doing. So, um, so, so when you go to confession or when you pray this or you go to confession, you would say an act of contrition. Now, there's lots of acts of contrition. The one I like to say is, uh, my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell but most of all because the offend me, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. And at that point, the, the, the priest would generally, um, unless it's something that you're not unwilling to let go, but the, the priest would generally absolve you of your sins uh, in that moment, and then, um, and then he would give you a penance, like go pray 10 Hail Marys or... I want you to go and, uh, you know, pray the rosary. I want you to meditate on the sorrowful mysteries. You know, they'll give you some type of penance or they'll say, uh, you know, for, for your penance, I want you to go help the poor. Something like that. That's a rare case, but I generally they'll give you some prayers to say, but whatever you got to do to absolve, to um, do a penance for that, for, for the sins you committed against God to be forgiven, for, uh, to be forgiven, um, just go ahead and do that. Follow the instruction and lead of the priest. So anyway, so with this, with this seven sorrows of Mary, uh, th this chaplet, basically, if you, if you pray the rosary and you've never prayed this, if you pray this chaplet, if you pray the seven sorrows of Mary, you, your I can't, I don't really know. Your eyes will be open so much more to the divine mysteries because this is the other side of, this is like, 
the other half of the mysteries uh, that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus went through, okay? Because this is from her perspective, right? And so, so basically this, the first mystery is, the sorrowful mystery is the prophecy of Simeon, where when Jesus was at eight days old and he was brought to the temple to be circumcised, Simeon, um, you know, prophesied he, he had, he was an old man and God promised him that he, that he asked God that he, that he should not die until he laid eyes on the Messiah. And when Jesus was brought in, the, uh, the spirit of God made it known to him that he is, that, that, that this is the one, that Jesus is the one. And he went over to him and told Mary, this child is destined for the fall and a sword too will pierce your heart. So the thoughts of many will be revealed. That's an interesting prophecy that he gave to Mary. And I'll let you guys think about what you think that means. But that's all biblical stuff. It's in the Bible. Okay, so everything that we're doing here is all you're meditating and focusing on scripture. Okay, but it's using pictures because back in the day, not everyone could read and write. So everyone could pray and everyone could look at a picture and remember the picture, what it looks like. So these so chaplets and the rosary uh they really grew in popularity because um you didn't have to know how to read or write to 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 pray these okay and to remember jesus and mary okay and the second uh joyful mystery uh second sorrowful mystery was is the flight into egypt when they had to they couldn't go home after they like came back from bethlehem the angel of the lord woke you know came to joseph in a dream and sent him on his way sent them to Egypt until Herod died. And then Herod went, went out and slaughtered all the children looking for Jesus so he could get killed. So he could kill Jesus because he was afraid a king was going to be rise up and take over his throne. So, um, so that's one of the other sorrowful mysteries. And uh, many of the other sorrowful mysteries, like finding Jesus in the temple, um, when Mary, when Jesus fell and Mary met him, okay, and helped him up. All right, that's one of the sorrowful mysteries. Imagine watching your son walking to his death, carrying, carrying the cross. Okay, so this, you know, and then his crucifixion. When they took him down from the cross, she's probably the one that helped clean his body. Maybe, uh, you know, as, well, maybe not clean, but like, you know, prepare him for burial. Okay, and so, and, and, and that's a sorrow of Mary's. And then when they placed him in the tomb, Okay, and so and it was it was the Passover. The sun was setting. They couldn't do any more, so they they took off. They had to close up the tomb. They couldn't finish up the ceremony of burial um, because uh, the sun was setting. They had to get inside. I mean, they were Jews. They don't they don't you know burying someone on the Sabbath would be considered unlawful. So so they had to go and 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 wait until Saturday was over so that they could come on Sunday so they could finish the ceremony. And that's what you see in Scripture. When Mary, the mother of James, and Mary, Jesus's mother, and Mary Magdalene, the three Marys, they're on their way back to the tomb, and then they're discussing with one another. They're saying, who will roll, roll away the stone? It's so big, and they're carrying some incense and stuff, and they're going to go bring some oil and anoint Jesus's body and stuff. But then when they show up, this, this, the stone's been rolled away, and there's an angel sitting on top of the stone saying, if you're looking for Jesus, if you're looking for Jesus, he's not here. He's risen just like he said. Okay. And so, so, so there's that, that, um, basically this is this, these are all of Mary's sorrows. And then you have Mary's joys in the joyful mystery. So if you pray both of these today, it would be a great honor to the blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, and if you can get to uh, mass tonight, uh, you know, for, um, Saturday night vigil to receive Holy communion, that'd be great. Um, so, that's all I have to say about today's feast day to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I recommend you consecrate yourself to the Blessed Virgin Mary. I also recommend that you guys consecrate yourself to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Just go ahead and look up the consecration and you can uh, consecrate yourself with the consecration to the Sacred Heart. Uh, I'll be doing the same. Uh, uh, I consecrated myself to the Blessed Virgin Mary when I first became Catholic. And the consecration that I used is... Um, in the back of the book of um, Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is uh, by St. Louis de Montfort. Uh, and and uh, it's in the back of the book. 
and it's how you should you would consecrate yourself to the mother of god so um thanks again for watching the upper room i hope you like this video if you like this video please share it with somebody else that who may appreciate it um and uh and and i hope that uh um the things that i'm teaching on this channel uh you're you're learning more than than you expected uh, I mean, I'm not a theologian, or you know, by by any means, but I am a, I am a convert to the faith, and I am in love with the Catholic Church and, and Catholicism, uh, because it's Jesus' church, it's His church. Uh, even though sometimes there's corruption going on inside, uh, Jesus is in charge, and, and will and, and he 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 will be the judge of everyone who has done wrong, who has led many astray. So um, we thank you again for, for, for watching Upper Room. Uh, please uh, tune in again um, next week. I should be doing uh, a rosary in Latin. Uh, if you don't know how to pray Latin, uh, um, you know, you could try to look it up uh, and then try to find up my, my video, uh, Praying the Rosary in Latin. I did one a long time ago, so it's been a while since I've done it again. And then I'll be taking your prayer requests. So uh, if you want to leave a prayer request in the comments, Go ahead and leave that prayer request in the comments and um, say, you know, uh, for the rosary in Latin and just after the comment. And then I'll, I'll, I'll write them all down and then I'll pray for everyone. Uh, please pray for me. I'll be praying for you. Thanks again for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe. See you again next week.